every spring I have a problem in my flock and it's this. Thinning feathers on the backs of some of my hens. Now, this is what I call stage one, where some of the feathers back here are damaged or missing, but the back is still covered and protected by the feathers that remain. And then stage two is when so many feathers on the back are missing that the skin on the back or the tops of the wings becomes exposed. It can be really red and bruised and just very raw looking. It looks very uncomfortable. And then stage three is really ugly. It's when the skin breaks and bleeds. And you can have some really serious problems if you let things get to stage three. I am gonna show you an example of that in a minute that's a bit graphic, so you've been warned. Check out now if you don't wanna see anything disturbing. But first, why is all this happening? Unprotected sex. And more specifically, it's too much unprotected sex because unlike with humans, it does take more than once with chickens. Stay with me. When a rooster mates with a hen, he actually jumps up on her back and then he has to balance up there. And a lot of times you'll see his feet sliding down her back or wings as he tries to balance and mate. And so you can see how over time that could start to damage or even pull out her feathers. And of course, the more frequently a particular hen mates, the more likely she is to have this problem. And in a single flock of chickens, if you are keeping even just one rooster, you are likely to have some hens who start having this problem of feathers being damaged <coughs> or pulled out. And it probably won't be all of your hens. And that's because some roosters favor particular hens, but even more so, some hens just like to mate more than others. And so for example, with this little hen here, her name's Elvira, she's constantly asking the roosters to mate with her. And she probably mates about 10 times more than any of my other hens. I have frequently seen her go from one rooster to the next, to the next, to the next and then back to the first one again. So she's always my first hen in the spring, or in her case, usually late winter, that starts having these thinning feathers. And she's always the first one then to get that hen saddle. So this year I put it on her in early February. I should have put it on even earlier. But with most of my hens, I don't need to put saddles on them until about May. And it's this hen saddle then that protects those back feathers and those wing feathers so that she never goes from stage one into stage two or God forbid stage three. Which brings me to a clip I'm gonna show you. And this clip comes from the YouTube channel Gold Shot Farm. I will be inserting my commentary here, but if you wanna see the full original video, I'll link to it below. It's definitely worth watching. And if you're not familiar with Goldshaw Farm, it is one of my favorite YouTube channels. This guy, Morgan Gold, he's a great storyteller. He has a great personality and he's done marvelous work on chicken welfare. He started a movement last year to get tractor supply to improve the way they were treating their chicks in their stores. And tractor supply actually listened to him. So he made a huge difference in the lives of probably thousands, if not more, baby chicks. And I have nothing but admiration and respect for Morgan. So when I came across this video he put out, which was a couple years ago now, but when I came across it, it just broke my heart a little because there were two very unnecessary chicken deaths in this video that happened because he didn't use hen saddles. So the backstory to this clip I'm gonna show you is that Morgan was keeping three chickens. He had two hens, Henrietta and Marguerite or Margie, and he had one rooster, Lucky. And Morgan tells us this sad story about the trio. For the first few weeks, things were okay. Henrietta, Marguerite, and Lucky all made a nice little flock and things were good. But eventually we noticed that for Henrietta, she was starting to get really beat up. She had all these scratches on her back and these cuts and it was from Lucky mating with her for whatever reason being pretty vicious with her and he opened up blood. All right, so there you saw stage three of what can happen to your hen's backs when they are mating too frequently. You can see that it is very, very serious. But the problem here was not likely so much a vicious rooster as the fact that he was keeping one rooster with only two hens. The rule of thumb in backyard chicken keeping is one rooster to every 10 or 15 hens because roosters mate a lot and the more hens they have, the more that mating can get spread around and not just focused on a small number of birds. And if you are keeping one rooster with just two hens, you will almost certainly end up with this stage three problem on their back and wings if you don't give them hen saddles, almost certainly. Especially if you're keeping them in a confined space where it's hard for a chicken to get away 
and especially if you're raising very young chickens. And Morgan did hatch these chickens himself, so these are very young chickens. And roosters in that first year of life are ultra hormonal, and they mate a lot more than they do when they're older. Let's get back to Morgan's story. For whatever reason, being pretty vicious with her, and he opened up blood. And as he opened up blood, Marguerite started to peck the heck out of her. So seeing all of this, I realized, despite the fact that I wanted to keep one rooster, um, I wasn't gonna be able to keep one rooster. Hey, easy there, man. Easy. And there's unnecessary death number one. Now, Henrietta was really banged up from her exchanges with Lucky and Marguerite. The wounds that she had were starting to get infected and even though we were treating it with things like blue coat and Allison was doing everything she possibly could to treat it, um, by the point that we started to really apply some serious medical attention, um, it looked like it was a little bit too late. And, and although it broke Allison's heart, Henrietta died. And there's a necessary death number two. Chickens are attracted to blood and so if a hen does have an open wound or a bleeding wound she is likely to be pecked to death if she's not able to get away. This is natural, this is normal, and it is our job as keepers to prevent this from happening by either covering up that wound before it's bad or by separating the chicken so that she can heal. But any way you look at it, a hen saddle put on at the right time could have prevented this whole ordeal. And my heart goes out to Morgan and Allison. I know how hard it is when situations like this happen, and I feel very bad that they had to go through this. But at least now you've seen this cautionary tale, so your hens should never be getting into stage three, and really they should never even be getting into stage two. If you pay attention, you can catch this feather thinning very early. So you'll see here with Muffy, she's got some feathers looking a bit tattered. She has a little bit of down showing through. That's an early stage one. If you look here at Thelma, she's got a little bit more broken feathers and more down feathers throwing showing through. That's more kind of a medium stage one. If you catch it, especially in that early stage one, and just put a hen saddle on her then, that's the perfect time. Okay, and lastly, hen saddles are not created equally. Most of them are terrible. I will link to my favorite one below, but you do need to know that you can't just buy any old hen saddle off of the internet. You can't just go find any old pattern off the internet to make your own hen saddle. There is one thing in particular that you absolutely need in your hen saddle, and you can learn exactly what that is in my short video right here. Happy chickening.